I've been doing a little bit of wood carving here. I carved out this one and this one. This one I got from the Salvation Army thrift store. It's a young lady uh, praying in a robe, standing on a hill. I got it 50% off. Southern Living at Home carved this one. I wanted to try to make a, a carving myself based uh, loosely on, on this one. So the first one I did was uh, this one here made out of a 2 by 4 of pine wood that I had out in the barn. And uh, this one is her grandmother. She's an elderly lady praying in a robe. Uh, pine wood does not stain very well, so I painted this black using black enamel paint. I still got to make a stand for this one. Then I uh, carved this one last week. This one's made out of a 2x4 of western red cedar, green wood. Green wood is a tree that was cut down recently. It still has a lot of moisture in it. It, makes, it has pluses and minuses uh, when it comes to wood carving or woodworking in general. It's easier to cut, easier to carve, but it doesn't hold detail as much as wood that's been dried out. I thought the back turned out pretty good. This is a, these two are the first carvings I've done in the round, the whole body. I've done some wood spirits, which is just the, the head, you know, the, the face. Give you a close-up view of the face there. She looks kind of sad or kind of scary. I kept thinking of Lady Margaret, that folk song. So I think, you know, maybe I should call her Lady Margaret. She's like a praying ghost in purgatory, stuck between heaven and hell, trying to pray her way out. That's what I kept thinking while, while I was carving her out. So uh, so how I went about doing this was I took a, I went down to Lowe's and I got a, a 2 by 4 of, of roughed out uh, western red cedar in the rough green and I cut off cut me off a piece to length and then I laid this on top this is the model and then I just traced an outline around it it's hard to get a really you know crisp outline like this when you're just laying this on the wood but I did it on the front and on the side then I took it to the bandsaw and I cut it out now if you're thinking about getting into wood carving there's a lot easier way and a more accurate way to, to do that you can take a picture like if you found a model something like this a carving that you wanted to carve uh, what I would do well I didn't do it so I guess I should say I won't uh, what I but anyway the better way to do it is to take a picture of it the front the side and then print that out and then trace that onto uh, the wood you're going to carve using carbon paper. Put the carbon paper on the wood, put the printed out picture on the wood and then trace it, trace it out on the front and on the side. That way you can take it to the bandsaw and get a lot more detailed shape of what you're going to be carving. But I got the rough dimensions on this and then what I used was uh, after I cut it out on the bandsaw, I, I uh, use a Japanese Shinto rasp and a lot finer rasp. I highly recommend the Japanese Shinto rasp for wood carving or woodwork in general. And they're, they're not very expensive. They're only like $20 and they last a long time. And they take off a lot of wood. And I used Harbor Freight chisels, the, the cheap chisel set from Harbor Freight. I think it was $9.99 with a 20% off coupon it was like $7.99 or something so like anyway that. I just wanted to uh, get this documented I'm thinking about turning my channel into a kind of a, a video diary or whatever maybe uh, things I do just to get it documented on the record 
maybe I'll leave it public for a while, maybe turn it in private, I don't know. I'm not very good at just these talking videos, but I built this banjo too, by the way, a 